No pestilence had ever been so fatal or so hideous. Blood was its avatar and its seal. The redness and the horror of blood. There were sharp pains and sudden dizziness, and then profuse bleeding at the pores with dissolution. And the whole seizure, progress and termination of the disease were the incidents of half an hour. But the Prince Prospero was happy and dauntless and sagacious. When his dominions were half depopulated, he summoned to his presence many hale and light-hearted friends to the deep seclusion of one of his castellated abbeys. This was an extensive and magnificent structure, the creation of the Prince's own eccentric yet august taste. With these precautions, the courtiers might bid defiance to contagion. The external world could take care of itself. In the meantime, it was folly to grieve or to think. The prince had supplied all the appliances of pleasure. These and security were within. Without was the Red Death. It was towards the close of the fifth or sixth month of his seclusion that the Prince Prospero entertained his friends at a masked ball of the most unusual magnificence. It was a voluptuous scene, that masquerade. The tastes of the Duke were peculiar, and it was this which had given character to the masqueraders.
There were much glare and glitter and piquancy and phantasm. There were arabesque figures with unsuited limbs and appointments. There were delirious fancies such as the madman fashions. There was much of the beautiful, much of the wanton, much of the bizarre, something of the terrible, and not a little of that which might have excited disgust. To and fro there stalked, in fact, a multitude of dreams, and these, the dreams, writhed in and about, causing the wild music of the orchestra to seem as the echo of their steps. It was in the last chamber that stood a gigantic clock, and when the minute hand made the circle of the face, and the hour was to be stricken, there came a sound which was of so peculiar a note and emphasis that there was a brief disconcert of the whole gay company. For a moment, all is still and all is silent. The dreams are stiff frozen as they stand. But the echoes of the chime die away, and a light, half-subdued laughter floats after them as they depart. And now again the music swells and the dreams live and writhe to and fro more merrily than ever. The revel went whirlingly on, 